Okay, ladies and gentlemen, look, we're going to be here just for a second. Not going to be here a long, long time, but it's a TikTok thing. We're going to be here for at least 10 minutes, so y'all just get some popcorn and some Snickers. Okay, guess what, y'all? I just did a three-hour console again. Now, hold on now. There are some people who talk about $550 for a console. Not only do I do documents for people, but my consults last for three hours at least. One consult lasted for four hours last week. The amount of information people get, then they get a copy of a video of the entire consult and then an audio copy. Please, you find somebody out there who does documents. Okay, you find somebody out there who is going to sit up there and take three hours with you for consults. So find, no, no, hold on, hold on, just so that you get it. Find somebody out there who will do a pre-consult. In other words, talk to you before the consult to find out what you want to talk about. Go over the details and spend at least an hour with you on that consult. So don't nobody complain to me about me saying you're paying for my time. You're not paying for a consult. You're paying for me to step away from the other things that I get to do. And the fact that some people, I haven't met too many people who didn't appreciate. Now, the people who complained, there's been at least three so far. One of them, a lady who... I did the pre-consult, which she got the information she wanted in the pre-consult, and then she just canceled everything and requested a refund. Not because she wasn't satisfied. She got her answer. She don't need no consult. He told me everything. I can get everything else off his videos. It's her attitude. Yeah, I deal with people like that. Not many. Not with the consults. That was the only one. That would never happen again. Okay. I want to talk to you guys for a second. The person I was talking to, we were talking taxes, and I, I, I told him, I said, look, I forgot to tell everybody about this, and they need to know about this. And I have forgotten to tell you guys about this. I just did the lesson series. So let's call this lesson number five. Okay? Pay attention. Those of you who are doing your taxes, you know that we talked about the 3115 form, 3115. We talked about that form. That's where you change your accounting method from cash to accrual method. When you change it from cash to accrual method, you're supposed to be using, should be, you're supposed to be using the general business credit. You're a sole proprietor. You don't file it on no 1040. You know, you go going to file general business credit. Now, see, most people, I have an estate and I have a trust. So that's a 1041. Okay, not a 1040. 1041 filing. But anyway, hold on. Let's. We're going to go to... General business credits, because y'all y'all need to know something about general business credit. We can go to the instruction, instructions, because we got to explain something to y'all. Watch this. I'm going to control F and I'm going to do S O L E. So, sole proprietorship. Eligible small businesses. You know, sole proprietorships are considered businesses. That's right. It says it right there. Eligible for being a business is a sole proprietorship. So, why are you doing it on your personal tax filings? That's for individuals. Individuals are not businesses. Hold on now. You didn't know that? An individual is not a business. I know some people say individual is a corporation. An individual is not a corporation. Individuals have their own tax filing documents. Are they treated as a corporation? They could be, but not when it comes to business. Partnerships, corporation whose stocks are not publicly traded, and sole proprietorships. These are eligible businesses for filing 3,800. Y'all got to understand the 3,800. This is where your taxes go, your credits, people. Your credits. Wait, hold on. Y'all don't understand. I know you don't understand. I'm, 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 I'm so sorry you don't understand. So watch this. This is the PDF. Yes, I'm tired. Oh, you're always tired. No, I'm tired, tired. That's a three-hour. Anyway, carry forward general business credits. Say what? Non-passive credits. This is only business credits, ladies and gentlemen. Aren't you guys talking about business credits and those of you who are doing the $400 billion per party, $64 trillion in total? I'm not telling you guys to do it for $64 trillion. I would never suggest that. I would suggest that you do a couple of them for $400 billion like you're like you have the right to do. You can do it for $64 trillion. You got the right. You got the right, but you haven't done the research. You, you've done the greed. You've done the greed but you haven't done the research, okay? Some of you guys are going to be greedy. Knock yourselves out. This is how you document your business tax credits. 
well, no, business credits. You know, this doesn't say nothing about no business tax credits right up here. It says business credits. Okay, that's why I'm trying to tell you they're only tax credits when they're applied to taxes. Your This is not applied to taxes. This is your documenting your federal credits. Business credits and tax credits are not synonymous. They don't mean the same thing. Don't let nobody tell you that they are because they'll be lying to you because if they were. Now, look, corporations also fill out the 1120 form. Hold on. Corporations also fill out the 1120 form. There are certain forms that are necessary. Now, it says individuals entering the sum amount on the 1040 and the 1040 SR and the 1040 ER, line 16 and schedule 2. So it says individuals can fill this out, but that's not the way it's supposed to go. Okay, because individuals don't get the benefit of filling this out. Huh? Individuals don't get the full benefit of filling this out. This corporations get the full benefit. So I'm I'm sorry. Oh, and estates and trusts, you see? I have an estate and a trust, and that's who I'm filing for. Yeah, what you find info. Anyway, there you go. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we definitely wanted to show you this. Now, again, we'll do this last thing. Bills of exchange. Stop letting them tell you that your bills of exchange are junk. When you do a bill of exchange and you send it to the campus, it's called the campus support for settling the account through Fedwire, usually Ogden, Utah, one of them places. You want them to settle the account through Fedwire. If that goes directly to the treasurer, then you know it's got to be some weight because guess what? It is shipped overnight. When you send it, you don't send it overnight. They send it overnight to the treasurer's office. Oh, no, no. You need to understand it's inner office mail. They don't send it through FedEx and UPS. It's inner office mail. All right. So, again, credits. Business credits are business credits, people. Go for your business credits. Document your business credits. The 99C and the K1 are not the same thing. So when you're documenting one, you're adding what's on one and you're adding what's on the other to your business credit tax form. I am so glad we had the opportunity to talk about this. Look, I got to go, as you can hear in my voice cracking. Yeah, that's stress and that's fatigue. So it's time for me to go crash because I'm about to go crash, dude. And we will speak to you all at another time. Take care, y'all. Got to go. Got to go. Got to go. Go. Go.